Hey, I'm No Disco, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, what's up? I'm Sarah from Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with one of my favorites ever, No Disco. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy to be talking to you. I discovered your music on Discover Weekly. Thoughts in Your, in your Car was, like, on my playlist. I think, like maybe like since it was released or something and I was like who is he he's cool and now we're here <laughs> and fellow Canadians exactly I hold yeah. like a province over <laughs> exactly yeah yeah so I mean uh it's so great to talk to you I have to say I love your room so what is your favorite poster on your wall right now um to be honest I, I'm going to have to go with, there's a Marlboro poster up there. Yeah. Um, say what you want about cigarettes, but damn, those guys made, and women made great um, advertisements back in the day. There was something, the Marlboro, every single Marlboro ad you'll ever see is just like the most beautiful thing ever. So I'm like looking at them. I'm like, I really need to take up smoking now, but that's not good. But hey, I don't know. They did, they did their job very well. So definitely that one's like the best too. It's like purplish, orangey. Like it's like a photo. I've, I've never seen a photo like it before. And it's just an ad for cigarettes. So I think that's got to be the favorite. I mean, props to like the marketing team. Must yeah. Have job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how is Toronto doing right now? Are you guys still in like a lockdown? Yes. Yes. It seems to be never ending. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I think they just extended it again. I, I honestly am losing track of days and time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's still kind of the same, you know, at least we can leave our house and like walk around, but yeah, just grocery stores and essential items, I guess. Um, yes, yeah, so it's been rough, but um, I think, I think soon we'll be out of it. I mean, I hope so with live shows, like being announced, like, I'm so excited. So is there an artist that announced a tour that you are so excited to see? Hmm. Who did I see announce a tour? I think John Mayer is going on the road with the Grateful Dead. Oh my God. Wow. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. yeah so I've never been able to catch him live, even though he's like my favorite ever. Um, so I think I might just go to that, even though like I'm not the biggest Grateful Dead fan. Um, I got to see Johnny. Mm -hmm. I got to see him. And I don't know where they're going to play. I think they usually play um, in Toronto, Bud Stage. You know Bud Stage? I've never been, but I would love to, yes. <laughs> it's a nice It's a nice venue. Um, so I think he usually plays there. So I'm stoked. I would, I would love to go to that. Amazing. Um, most of the time, I just go for the openers and like fall in love with like the headliners too. It's so much fun. Um, and I know Valley's going on tour, like Alexander 23, like so many other people. Yeah. Great. So yeah. are you excited to play live again? Have you ever played live as like no disco? Oh my gosh. Like I literally don't even know how to answer that because it's like literally all I care about and all I talk about. Yeah. Um, but the story with us with live was I took a really long time to release the music because I wanted to make sure that everything was like ready to go from the beginning. Yeah. So we started rehearsing around the time that Thoughts in Your Car came out in September of um, 2020, no, sorry, 2019. Yeah. Uh, and then rehearsed all the way up to March 3rd, where we played like a free show at a venue called the Horseshoe Tavern here in Toronto. I don't know if you know it. Yeah. Um, and played that show and literally two days later was the announcement of like everything being shut down. Um, it, like, we got booked for something called school night, like immediately after, which was really cool. And then I just remember getting an email that was like, Hey guys, we might have to cancel this uh, for this week, but you know, we'll probably reschedule in like a week or so. And they're like, is that cool? And I was like, Oh, whatever. Didn't happen didn't happen how many god it's been a year plus since that and it's just like holy i can't believe it but things are looking good so i'm very excited 
And um, I can definitely say that there will be no disco shows this fall. Amazing. And please come to Montreal because I will be there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I, we haven't finalized everything yet, but um, yeah, there's definitely going to be a Canadian show at least. Okay, cool. I'm going to talk about school night. Um, I think they're doing like Twitch live streams now, right? Is that the same thing? Yes. And I have done the live stream thing. It's okay, but it's just not the same. Like, like playing and then like talking to your computer. Like, like I remember doing one and I think I did it like a couple months ago and I'm like, all right, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm just trying to like cope with the internal set, the eternal, eternal sadness of just like playing to your computer. Like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the whole digital thing. I'm like a big like person to person guy. And um, yeah, just th this whole this whole pandemic and just like talking to people, I've connected with more people than I ever have in my life. But like, I don't know, at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, right, this is a screen. Yeah. And that was happening when I was doing some online dating. I was like, oh, I'm talking to someone for four hours and like, they're not actually like a person. Yeah. I don't know. It's been, it's like, I don't think it's good for the mind. I, I don't like the digital thing. I think, I think we're all going to have like a, I think this was a good awakening for everyone to be like, nah, this ain't it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, especially live shows because there's only so much like a screen can do, right? hundred percent. And we, whether it's like, I, I like, I've seen this big push for like, um, is it discord communities and stuff? Like artists like having, but it's like, I don't know. I'd rather just see people in person. And I, I was, I was, I've been talking to a lot of, artists about this like I don't know like it, for me because I'm like a fan of music before anything like I don't know I don't want to like see up the person's nose all the time like there's something like alluring and and interesting about like not knowing everything about an artist like for me when I used to go to shows it was always like oh my god like who is this like, they're like in a they live in a different universe than me yeah. and it's not like so when I want to like kind of project that it's not like an ego thing it's just like I I know what it's like to be like someone that just like enjoys the music and it's not it's when you just know everything about the person their address uh the color of their like their underwear it's just too much like I think it's just like I, I I'm not the biggest fan of like the total transparency of everything yeah. I don't know but it's just me yeah, I totally agree with that. It makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, when did your love for music like come to play? Did you was music like your always always your number one thing? Um, yeah. Like ever since I was a kid, um I was always just the biggest like listener. Like I I kind of learned instruments by um a result of just sheer like will like like I was put into like okay here's piano lessons here's like guitar lessons but like I just couldn't learn I'm not like a really good like learner like I, I've never played other people's songs like I've been very bad at covers well I did put out a Coldplay cover in March but aside from that like growing up I have a brother and and he used to be like dude, why don't, like, because everyone, like, to kind of learn, you, you sit down, and you're like, okay, well, Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple, let me learn that, and for me, I was just always like, ah, I just want to make my own thing, and I, I don't, I just kind of figured out how to do it, just by, like, uh, I need to have a song like this, and then I would sit down and just figure it out, so, and even piano, too, like, I'm not the greatest um, piano, pian pianist, I don't know, there's a weird word for it um but like i i've just kind of taught myself in a way and play my own songs and people are like oh how long have you been playing like you're getting i'm like i i couldn't tell you what i'm i'm playing so it's just interesting how music was just such a passion for me that it just i just figured it out like i i can't explain it any other way it's very 
it's, it's kind of weird for me to to be like yeah how did i just like figure this all out because i'm not a good learner but here we are that's so cool though so like do your songs sort of always start out with like the guitar like piano like you just like playing around with it yeah pretty much um i, I write a lot from um my acoustic guitar and uh, you know at this point like i'm actually just like a good guitarist but like leading up to it not really but um yeah and i just i just mess around i think i'm like one of my strengths is just coming up with good like guitar loops and then um usually goes from there but i always focus on making sure a song sounds great acoustic and then going to produce it because um I don't know. I think a lot of music now is just kind of like you sit down and you start like a drum loop and then everything just kind of happens as it goes. And then you kind of throw like a vocal down. But like for me, I very much make sure that it's written um, acoustic and then we take it to like produce it because it's got to be like a good, the writing needs to be like really solid before it's produced for me. Yeah, cool. Um... And I mean, where did the name No Disco come from? Were, were there like other ideas? Um, yeah, the, I, that's one of the reasons why it took so long to like finally start yeah. is because for like a year, I was just bouncing around from friends and being like, oh, it should be this because <laughs> I was always very fixated. Like I always like studied like artists, like full careers. And that was very daunting to me because it's like, okay, so if I'm gonna make like multiple records, I have to make sure that the name I choose is something that I love and I'm gonna be cool with like five to 10 years from now because I always just thought like 20 years ahead and that's kind of one of my strengths but also weaknesses in life is I plan far too much ahead. But um, I was bouncing around with like, because I was like, okay, I'm one person. So do I wanna be like a, like a name, like Chris something, cause that's like my name, or do I want like, you know, like a band name? And I think I just, I went to a brand band name because what I thought of merch, like, uh, I don't know. It's like wearing someone's name is kind of weird to me. I wanted to have, like have like a, a brand because I knew merch was gonna be very important for me. So like making sure that the name was brandable and stuff was, uh, really important and no disco came from me uh looking at an old depeche mode record called speak and spell and there was a song called no disco and i initially just chose it because um it looked like a cool word like i'm very like attuned to like design and stuff and i just thought that it, it looked good as like a word more than anything and then when i kind of did some research I found out that it was a talking head song and um, kind of realized that at the time they were coming out of um, the disco era and making like new wave music and it kind of had elements of disco. And I think that David Byrne from talking heads kind of used it in a song called life before wartime to be like, we don't make like disco music. Like this is poppy, but this isn't like, because disco had like a bad rep when it still kind of does has like a rep reputation for just being easily consumed da, da, da. like i think it kind of has the same connotation that pop music has now so i think he kind of used it to be like this isn't like regular disco music this is cool so that's how i've kind of felt about my stuff too is like i very much write from like a pop perspective in terms of like writing production but i want to be i'm always like but i make cool pop music right like this is this is really cool and so it, it's kind of like this it's almost like an insecure it's not insecurity it's it's kind of this self-aware like look i make pop music but it's cool pop music it's not what you think it is but i think people are now kind of like respecting pop more which is really great but yeah it has like a bunch of meanings i guess is the short form of what i've gone on about Amazing. Well, honestly, your music is amazing. Again, like, I haven't heard anyone sounds like your music. And it's just like, so cool. So gosh, that's <laughs> the best compliment ever. 
No problem. I mean it. Um, let's talk about the new mixtape. How are you feeling about it being released? Like, it's your debut mixtape? Yes. So, I mean, are you, like, excited now? Or are you more, like, nervous about people's reactions? Uh, yeah, it, it's been a long time coming. I kind of purposely dragged it out because I chose to be very conceptual with it as a debut and I really wanted to play shows to kind of like support it yeah. and didn't really get to, although like I'm still going to in the fall, but yeah, it feels good. Um, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it was just like a very specific period of my life um, from, I don't know, ages like 20, what did I say on social media, like 21 to 23. And yeah, it's just like my previous relationship from the first song to the last. And um, yeah, it's it, it, it feels crazy to to finally have it out. And I'm, I'm really proud of it. And the the, the terminology mixtape is kind of weird. It kind of has the, this connotation that goes back to like, I remember in like the early 2010s, um, there's a site called Datpiff. I don't know if you know it, but like Mac Miller used to put his stuff up there. Like it kind of has like rap kind of used it, its terminology for a long time around like the mid 2000s to like early 2010s. And for me, it sounds weird using the term mixtape because it kind of does have like a hip hop um, connotation. But for me, it, it's mainly just to do with the concept, which is the CD. I made this mixtape for someone in particular and it, it, it stands to be that, like a mixtape was classically like, you know, you'd meet someone, you'd kind of crush on them and then you'd, you'd go home and burn a bunch of songs and like write them down on the CD, whether it be like on a piece of paper that was kind of like slipped into it. Like I have some from like ex-girlfriends and stuff from, from the younger days. Um, and then like every song would be different and kind of have a different sound. So for me, that's what, it is like it's chronological story wise, but then sonically it's all so all over the place, which is very much on purpose because, you know, if I was to make someone a mixtape, that's what I would do is I would choose a bunch of songs with different moods that kind of said different things. But then what if someone made you a mixtape, but they produced and wrote all every song about you, which is what it is. So that's like, a little background on it. Yeah, and it's even called Who, who Knew I, I'd Write Songs About You, so it fits in perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so were you sort of like juggling whether it would be like an album, EP, or mixtape, or did you always have your mind on a mixtape because you wanted to make like an actual mixtape? Well, funny enough, I, I haven't cleaned my desk in forever, but like I have like all of my like notes from like when I was making this like this whole this whole process of making this record is like in this book and like I drew this up which is like a concept for the mix like the cd like a long time ago I don't I haven't dated this but like this is pretty much what it turned out to be except I didn't handwrite on the, on the front yeah. but like that was always the idea because I wanted to kind of have like selling the mixtape as it was it's like no one need like oh, some people do, but like a lot of people don't need CDs now, you know, you have your Bluetooth when you get in the car, like you don't need it. So for me, I pretty much made it as like a memorabilia thing. Like it's the, what was compelling about it as like a sellable object is like, you get a piece of the wall, I'm handwriting it. It's a replica of what I made for the person so that's that's what that's what it is and having that concept allowed really early allowed me to frame the whole project I just knew that I was going to make it that way and then I was like okay so I guess it's a mixtape or for a while it was going to be a playlist digitally but then it's just confusing so I was just like call it a mixtape don't want to call it an album yet because I don't consider it like a debut record um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. Amazing. I still collect CDs, but, 
There you go. And I, I do too. I actually, yeah, I have some here. I have Justified by Justin Timberlake. I have New Edition All for Love. Um, but I don't even know. I think I had a car that only played CDs recently. So that's why I have these. Otherwise, I'm mainly a vinyl guy. But yeah. yeah. So cool. Um, and I love how much detail you put into like everything you do, even with like the mix tape, you're adding like a piece of your wall and like a handwritten thing. So like, how do you come up with these ideas? Are you just like a creative person in general? <laughs> like, look, like I said before, I am like the biggest like art fan. So like I create the way that I would like, I create what like if someone did that like an artist did that that I admired I would be like holy shit so I'm always just trying to like wow myself as like a fan so that's what drives me and that's what drives the attention to detail with live that's what drives all the visuals that's what drives everything it's just being like I need to do what would make me like really impressed and like, you know, I've been to shows where I get goosebumps. I, I've had bought physicals that I'm like, holy shit, look at this. And I'm it's just constantly, I guess I'm competitive by nature. And I'm just like, well, I have to do better than this. So uh, it's just, yeah, I, everything just needs to be very, um, needs to live in a world, the no disco world. So that's how I kind of, approach everything yeah totally and i mean again so cool so i mean were were some tracks like did, did some tracks not make the mixtape that didn't fit like the storyline or something um hmm, no um like there was a song called love you early that was on spotify a while yeah. ago that was removed um, it just, it was kind of created in a different, um, like at a different time and it wasn't really relevant and, and leading up to it, I was like, I can't have a song that just like, wasn't part of this, like a cover's fine, but like having a song, it was very important for me for everything, like seven songs in to be the narrative. Mm -hmm. So it kind of came from like a disingenuous place. Like still loved it and it was a, it's a really fun live song like when we played it live it was really really great but yeah it just didn't fit and even like i sacrificed choosing like especially in, as an, an at an early point as an artist you're like okay well let's go with the hits 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 yeah. and i kind of completed the release with second summer and the intro song and they, those really were just true to the story. Like I could have just followed up with like a song that I thought would just like playlist everywhere, but it was very important for me to like finish this as like a, as the story needed to be told. And um, yeah, so every song that's there was very true to the record and were all written and chosen like a year ago even more so although just recently we produced the intro song but yeah it's been plotted out for a long time unfortunately the music industry works that way where you just have to like plan years ahead yeah. but or at least for the first thing now everything moves very fast but yeah and now i was gonna ask like since it's so planned ahead like every release are you sort of like on to the next now or have you been <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, obviously, like in in the time since, like there's been tons of music that's been produced. Um, it's just recently we're just trying to figure out what we want to lead with. There is a song that kind of completes the narrative and moves on to something else that I think we're going to put out first that like really just completes Who Knew I'd Write Songs About You. So it's almost like a, uh, what's that called? not a prequel, not a sequel. It's just like the thing directly after. I, I, chapter, I guess, maybe? It's almost like, in a way, it's almost like a bonus track, but not really. It's just narratively complete. Yeah. In a sense. Because there are other songs written about 
seven or so. Who knows if it will ever end? But there's songs about a, a lot of different stuff. I've, I, I don't want to be like, uh, it's like, oh, okay, this dude only writes about one person. It's like, no, there's lots of songs coming up that are about the world, about being locked inside my room, um, internal stuff. Like, it's not, I'm not just the guy who's like constantly writing about this one <laughs> ex-girlfriend for my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> And like, like you said before about like it being like a project, not like hits. I, I prefer like song, like albums that are like a story, like the whole way through rather than like just a song that makes no sense with the other ones. Totally yeah. Sense. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I, you know, wanted to do. Like it, it was just very important to like, I wanted, I wanted to make sure that this record could live on and I would always be like, boom, God, I'm proud of that, rather than like sacrificing for, you know, whatever reasons. Yeah, I mean, you have to be your biggest fan after all, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I got to humble myself to some extent, but yeah. <laughs> this goes pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I mean, which tracks were the easiest and the hardest to make on the mixtape? Um, hmm, which one took? I remember having a lot of, um, well, Thoughts From Your Car is a whole funny story of like, um, I made it with Mickey from Valley and I was at his house and we, I, I was in a weird spot where I was just finishing school and I was deciding to like seriously do music and we were demoing all these old demos of mine and none of them worked. Like it just didn't feel right. And I just kind of had this like huge panic attack. And he just kind of like, we just kind of like walked around around his neighborhood and he was like, dude, relax. Let's like, show me some demos. Let's, let's see if there's like something else. So then there's a demo version of Thoughts From Your Car that was like quite different. It was very lo-fi. Um, if I could like, it kind of had Joy Division vibes um i don't i'm i'm into this band called black marvel that um it's it's kind of it's one dude and he makes this very like lo-fi synth pop that like literally sounds like it's from 1989 and you're it's muffled and you're in like the bathroom like the way that he in the venue like the way he produces it is like very i i, I don't even know how to describe it but the demo was like that but mike heard it or mickey heard it and he was like this is great. So then we just worked on it and the lyrics were just kind of written the day of, like as we were just doing it, it was just this very like true, I don't know where I'm going or what to do. Da, 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 da. I have a little fascination with IOUs, which is like, you know, feeling like, I think especially our generation, like our parents have been able to be nicer with us and allow us to not kicking us out super early and being like figure it out because like our housing markets messed up everything is super like crazy these days so just feeling like guilty all the time and i guess it resonated because um you know it's done it's done very well and it's very nice so it's um that i think that was probably one of the toughest songs because it we took like in one of the songs that we were demoing there was a drum solo and we were like what if we, it, it kind of was just this science experiment of being like, oh, let's take this from there. And uh, what if the chorus that we wrote was the bridge and let's write a new chorus. And it just was literally a science experiment, but it worked. So the hard work was worth it, I guess. Totally. And like, how did that bridge come to be? Because it's so cool. I mean, there's so much detail in it. So how did that um, yeah, so it, it literally, so I had a song called Touch um, that we were demoing and it was literally just about hypochondria. Like I was the biggest hypochondriac for like my whole life. It's kind of gone away since COVID funny enough, but um, it, it was it was actually a pretty cool song, but it just wasn't working for some reason. And there was that do 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 jack jack do 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 And then we were like, okay, that's really cool. Like the song wasn't working, but we were like, we need to take that from that. So then we just took it and those were samples, but then Mike, Mickey had a um, 
drum set and we were just like let's layer it with real drums and at the time i don't know i i wanted to make sure that like the first song was something that like i would hear and be like what there's a drum solo in this so at the time like i don't know i wasn't hearing a lot of like indie rock i guess that's what it would be classified as with like a drum solo so i was like throw it in there we need something we need something to like grab people's attention to be like oh okay i'll listen to no disco because what the hell is that because if i just made an indie rock song that fit on a playlist it's like okay fine this is cool but what if i throw something really weird into it maybe i'll grab more people's attention so it was a little purposeful um but yeah that's that's where it came from and the bridge that where I go and we'll drive all night what you meant was the original chorus but oh then God. we just moved it and then the better chorus was obviously na, 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 na. that obviously sold better and those high notes are crazy by the way I have to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah I I um have an interesting vocal range I I'm, I don't it's not as good as I would maybe hope like there's people that can get like whistle tones and just like go even even higher falsetto but i think um the, the falsetto has kind of become like a no disco trademark in a sense so um i'm happy with that but then we're also going to bring some of the low voice out which i clearly have in my talking voice we'll we'll see we'll see <laughs> oh what God, happens. so cool <laughs> yeah um so i mean would you like only um focus on one vocal range or would you like mix it up together um yeah well i just for me like i again i kind of frame things on like what would i find cool so like i there's there's tons of stuff coming up that i every song is just very different like a lot of people say that but i like to pride myself and being like this project is a little like too all over the place, which is could be like a a bad thing in a sense because people like have a hard time identifying what your thing is. Like I feel like you kind of have to have a thing, and then people are like, oh, "Okay," and then you can start doing weird stuff. But I don't know. It's just constantly like that's just how I write. That's just who I actually am. Like I just very and that's why the whole mixtape concept concept worked in projecting that is is rather than be like i think that if i didn't release these songs under the concept of a mixtape people would be like what what and every song is just but when that narrative is kind of in in that creative choice is kind of like stated then it's like oh okay well i get it now but and you know they all fit within um this artwork and and everything um but yeah i think otherwise you can get kind of but so many people i think listeners now i was talking to mickey about this the other day too are just very diverse in, in what they listen to thanks to like a spotify mm -hmm. so yeah i think i think that's just the future so i'm just gonna keep doing it and see what sticks and you're killing it so congrats to that <laughs> No problem. So this is a fun question. If you could perform on any planet, which one would you choose and why? Planet? Yes. Oh. Considering you could, of course. Oh. Um, probably the moon. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be cool? Is that I a planet? That. Is that a planet? I don't know. <laughs> Let's say the moon. Because, you know, uh, people already went there. So either the moon or the sun, the, the sun would be kind of cool. It would be a little hot. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, but I think I'd be down with that. So either of those. Cool. I know like, the ones. You like bouncing back both of them while singing for a second. What's the one with the ring? Saturn. I feel like that would be cool if it does a spin because if we were on the ring and then like it was spinning around, I feel like that would be cool. That's so cool. I'm gonna have to plan that show. Give me a I hope there's power up there. We'll, we'll find out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so last question, who are your favorite artists right now? Who do you want to shout out? All that stuff. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, I got I got some. Okay. Shout out Motel Seven. Mm -hmm. Great guys. Great music. They're coming out with some new stuff soon. Love them. Great. Um, I I'm a huge like I'm trying to bring the acoustic guitar back with a lot of my new stuff, and they have this really really great cool sound with acoustic guitars and samples and stuff. Um, so I love them. And then let's shout out another local Toronto boy, um, Flower Boy. Great music, great dude. Um, he's been doing really well recently. Love his stuff. Check him out. And I think I think those are two good shout outs. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. It was so much fun. And can't wait for you to take over the world and play on the moon. The no disco world. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Wow. Love that. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you so much again. Thank you for, for wanting to talk to me.